Hey guys, Miles here. It's Sunday, so it's another Sports Sunday episode for you. And I have a special guest who you've seen in our previous videos, John Bautista, Grandmaster Shooter for USPSA. And today he's going to cover some secrets from the House of Speed, basically how to shoot fast. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Before we get to John and the content today, as you're aware, Hurricane Ian hit Florida just recently this past week, and one of our friends and sponsors, Mark 7 Reloading, was negatively affected drastically by the hurricane. In fact, some of uh, my friends and employees from Mark 7 completely lost their homes, so they've been really negatively affected. And you know, because of that, we want to support them, show our support for them. If, if you've been looking for a reloader, they make great products, guys, but we want to offer you guys an incentive this month, if you do support them by buying a reloader, we're going to give you over $6,000 worth of products. Yeah, absolutely, there's no joke there. Look at the list below, all the products that we have. If you like our content, there's a lot of content we don't share publicly, guys, and you're gonna absolutely love it. So if you guys do support them like we support them, you know they, they show a lot of love for us, so we really wanna help out, and we're gonna incentivize you guys support them, get $6,000 worth of product. So that's it. Just want to say that guys, you know, we really love those guys and you know, we feel bad that they were negatively effective. So please show your support. On to the content guys. Hi everybody. This is Sports Sunday with Tactical Hive. John Batista here, giving you some a little bit of secrets about the house of speed. Basically, how to shoot quickly. Some of the things I'm going to cover are stuff that you do already know. For others, it's probably a reminder of things you probably need to improve upon. First, let's make sure our gun is clear as we demonstrate these particular skills. Gun is cleared, let's move forward. Now, the first thing that everyone forgets or overlooks is actually establishing the grip on your holster. A lot of us like to just simply get on the gun real fast, but not have a full understanding of what this actually does to you as you shoot on the range. If you do not establish a proper grip by getting your hand on the holster properly, that will actually impact your first 10 20 or all your shots as you go through the course of fire in competition or in live fire or maybe even your CCW. So if you are dealing with concealed carrying or on the range doing competition, ensuring that you establish a proper grip is one of the most important first key steps of shooting quickly and accurately. So just as a reminder, we're talking in the realm of competition. Tactical Hive has a great library of other media that covers concealed carry. So for now, we're gonna talk about competition drawing. One of the most important things is establishing your index. Now, what to do with the hands is the first thing. Obviously, you don't wanna have your hands up in the air, down into your waist. You wanna have it where you're gonna be getting the grip properly and effectively. So how I like to do this as a left-hander, so for all of you very confused of the gun being on the wrong hand side, first, you wanna ensure that your beaver tail hits the webbing of your hand. The second thing, and most important thing after that, is what to do with the support hand. A lot of us have been taught in the past to keep it high and tight, right in the chest. However, what has a tendency to happen is your support hand is slow to get to the gun as you actually draw it out of the holster. We mitigate this problem for some of us by having the support hand close to the belt. So, on buzzer, or when you're about to draw, have your hands both come close to the gun as close as possible. Again, with the webbing of your shooting hand onto the beaver tail, establishing the grip with those three remaining fingers from the pinky to the ring, but more importantly, getting the support hand close to your gun. And I'll show you why this is very important. During the draw, as you get the support hand close, as the gun comes out, you are able to marry the two hands together as quickly as possible. I'll show you the other way. Under traditional thought, having the hand close to the chest you're marrying the gun and your support hand much later in the process, which doesn't allow you to establish that fabled grip needed to run the course of fire. So a full demonstration. Having the webbing of your hand touch the beaver tail, support hand very close to the gun itself, having the gun pull out of the holster as you normally would, but then now somewhere in this area of your lower body towards the belt, you're gonna bring that support hand close and marrying it lower and quicker than you would typically would and then follow through normally, eyes through the sights, establish a proper grip and trigger pull, and pull. 
So here's the old school draw type with the hand at the chest. Notice that the gun is very slow marrying to the support hand. And I was unable to get full control of the gun till about here, which is the natural index as I'm going to shoot. Let's do it the new way. Now it looks very quick, but the most important thing is I was able to marry the support hand and the shooting hand together much lower, which gave me much more control as I was looking through my sights to establish on the target. Another topic that has been poorly discussed in the shooting community is actually establishing your grip. In particular, how to actually apply pressure onto the gun itself. Now, a lot of people usually say, grip it and rip it. But what does that mean? What does grip it and rip it mean? What am I doing with my hands? Am I just crushing both with all the power in the world? But guess what? If you do that, you end up compromising your trigger finger. Now, you can do this at home. Take a magazine, take your gun. What I want you to do is, with your strong hand, I want you to crush and grip as hard as you can with your shooting hand to the point where it's shaking whatever you're holding. Now, I want you to slowly move your trigger finger. You should feel pressure between the fibers of your knuckle to the first knuckle of your actual finger. What's happening now is you have little control over what your trigger finger is doing. What I want you to do now is whatever you're holding, whether it's a gun, magazine, I would like you to lessen the grip, maybe 25%, and then move that trigger finger again. And you're gonna notice a very big difference between trigger finger control. By crushing your hand with all the pressure in the world, you lose out on sensitivity and full range of motion of your trigger finger. By having a much lesser pressure on your shooting hand, you are able to fully index that finger any which way you can. Another sport that is parallel to us is PRS. You'll notice that some of the PRS shooters actually will not wrap their thumb around the grip itself, but by having the littlest pressure as much as possible on their shooting hand, so it allows them to control that sub one pound trigger pull on their main rifles. It's up to you to determine what is the proper amount of pressure you wanna put on your gun. Now, where to put the pressure is the next key feature. As you're holding your gun, you're gonna have some touch points, as I call it, with your shooting hand to the gun itself. In particular, you have the front strap and then the back strap. For me, when I have my hand around my gun, those are the two places where my fingers and hand is actually touching the gun itself. The inside of the palm to the left-hand side for my, as a left-hand shooter, I don't have much contact there. Therefore, I don't focus pressure on that side. I have much more control applying the inside of my index fingers to the front strap and the palm to the back strap and applying front to back pressure, almost like a C-clamp and highly focusing on the front strap pressure and the rear strap pressure only to the point where my fingers do not curl into the gun itself. This also allows my trigger finger to be as free as possible as we demonstrated if you decided to completely crush the gun where you don't have as much control. The third topic we're gonna to cover today, which covers together the establishing of the grip and also how to grip is the trigger pull itself. Now there's a lot of controversial topics about what to do, how to do, what's the slap and whatnot. There is a symbiosis between getting a proper grip, establishing the pressure, which allows the trigger pull to happen either much easier or much worse for you as a shooter. So let's demonstrate. Gun being clear. Now, for some of us, we have long hands, short hands, and whatnot. The first thing you want to understand is, where is your trigger finger position as you naturally get on the gun? Now, we just covered how to draw with a proper grip and how to establish the grip in terms of pressure. When you get that establishing of the pressure, you need to determine where your finger rests on the trigger. Now, for some of you with long fingers, you may have this fabled finger that kind of goes right through the trigger guard. For some of you with short fingers, your trigger finger can barely touch the outside. If that is the case, you need to first determine how to get your trigger adjusted so the gun works for you. There's a ton of aftermarket parts that will allow you to get a better position of your trigger finger on the trigger itself. So consider that as your first topic. So after you established a proper position of your trigger finger on the trigger, let's talk about the pull itself. 
There are fundamentally a mechanical process as you pull through any gun. First off, when you go into single action with a Glock or a CZ, you have the fabled wall, a spot where if you pull any further, that's when the sear activates and then the hammer will fall forward. Before that, you have the slop, which is a little bit difficult to see on my gun since it's heavily modified, but there is space between the wall when the gun will go off and nothingness. This is the part where you want to get rid of the space or the slop as we call it in competition and get right to the wall. At this point, when you apply even and consistent pressure, assuming that you have the proper pressure with your shooting hand, the hammer should fall and undisturbed. A lot of us who have been taught in the past to grip hard and rip it, we have a tendency to have the gun shake. And then when we pull the trigger, guess what happens? It'll move ever so slightly, which causes inaccuracies. So again, building on the skills we just talked about, establishing a proper tension with your grip will allow you to have an even, consistent trigger pull by having much more control with your trigger finger. Now, when after the gun goes off, what you do not want to do is pin and hold the trigger to the rear. What this hap what's gonna happen here is, you're gonna establish incidentally tension in your hand which is gonna cause further inaccuracies when you try to reset the trigger and get back on that wall. So let me demonstrate to you exactly what that means. Now we're gonna to demonstrate to you the combination of skills we just talked about in terms of establishing a grip and a proper trigger pull to ensure that you have high accuracy and speed on a target. Now, firstly, walking it through, you wanna get rid of the slop as much as possible to get to the wall. At that point, as you are aiming through to your target, as you hold the trigger onto the wall and establishing your accuracy, pull through with even and consistent pressure. The gun is gonna go off. At that point, you want to release the trigger to the point where you're back onto the wall itself and then re-engage by removing the slop, getting on the wall, reacquire target, and pull. I will first demonstrate what it is when you pin the trigger to the rear and how that affects speed. Establishing a proper grip, by having front to rear pressure, the C-clamp we talked about, and the pressure that I like. Gun on target, and I'm going to pin the gun to the rear, but I'm gonna to try to shoot as quickly as possible. Here we go. I exaggerated by pinning the gun to the rear, slowing down the reset, which does not allow me to shoot quickly. Let me show you what happens when you pull the trigger, do not hold to the back, and try to reset as quickly as possible, Let's see how fast I can shoot this thing. Here we go. A significant difference. So those are the quick tips of how to shoot quickly. Thank you for joining us on Sports Sunday. Just to highlight just what we talked about is establishing your grip on the holster, ensuring that you determine how much pressure you're gonna put on your grip and how to properly pull the trigger in terms of understanding your trigger pull. Thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe. This is John Patisse with Tactical Hive. We'll see you next time. <laughs>